now let's see the topic called parabola with an introduction of what exactly is a parabola so now that we have discussed about circle the next concept which we're going to discuss is about parabola but before we discuss about parabola we need to take the most important concept from which the circle the parabola or the ellipse or the hyperbola or the different types of two-dimensional structures are obtained through the conic sections so the topic here is conic sections so here with the conic sections let's see how the different types of two-dimensional circle or a parabola etc are obtained so initially I take a cone So we all know that it's a three-dimensional cone which I have taken here. So let's see the conic sections of the different types of structures or the shapes which are obtained through various types of cutting of the cone. Suppose I take this cone and I cut it exactly out here perpendicular to the base of the cone. So if I slice the cone perpendicularly with the base of the cone then I get a circle is how I understand a circle through the understanding of a conic section so here when I just cut it I just have this cut in the form like this we get a frustum out here so this makes me understand that when I cut it exactly perpendicular the base here is a circle which I obtain so circle is indirectly said to be obtained through the perpendicular cutting of a cone through the base that is the conic section of the cone which is perpendicularly cut out here gives me a circle similarly we have the other type of conic section through which I get a parabola so let's see what kind of cutting of a cone in what angle of cutting of a cone I get a parabola the conic section of obtaining a parabola is how we get the method here so let's see how we get a parabola from the conic section now again we have a cone through which let's see how I get a hyperbola or a parabola through the conic section in a different cutting through an angle so in initial case I have seen that when I cut the cone perpendicularly to the base then I get a circle then what happens if I don't cut that perpendicularly that is if I slice it somewhere out here so in this case of slicing I get a hyperbola through which a parabola through which it comes like this so a parabola which is generally u-shaped is what I get when I slice it in some other angle out here is what is the parabola when this is cut across the angle then I get the parabola so parabola is the conic section of the cone which is cut other than at 90 degrees to the base of the cone so this is the shape which I obtain in case of a cone and next when I take a double cone out here then in this case if I just cut it twice say I just slice it on then I get a hyperbola which is in the shape of this with respect to the axis I get a slice on the top and I get a slice on the bottom through which I get a hyperbola which we're going to see in the later part of discussing the conic section of the hyperbola so if I have a cone where well, I have been cutting the cone perpendicular to the base I get a circle what if I cut this other than perpendicular or other than 90 degrees you suppose I cut this slantingly 
then what would be the shape I obtain here? In this case, when this is sliced, I get this to be somewhat like this. So this is cut in the slice where I get the shape which is called an egg-shaped structure which is an ellipse. So an ellipse is an oval shape and it is obtained when I cut the cone other than at 90 degrees in this manner. Now let's define a conic. Suppose I have the axis and the directrix and I have a fixed point S and a point here which is P and M is the perpendicular distance from P to the directrix. Then in this case the locus of all the points such that the distance from S to P by the distance from P to M are in constant ratio that is if I have SP by PM is always E a constant then the locus of all those points is called the conic implies locus of PXY is a conic under the condition SP by PM is equal to E and here we identify that S is the focus of the conic and here S the fixed point S is called the focus which we generally denoted by S is called the focus and the fixed straight line is called the directrix and the ratio SP by PM equal to E is called eccentricity. So here E is referred as eccentricity and it is given by the formula SP by PM and S is the focus and here this is the direct trace this is how we understand each part of the conic and the straight line passing through focus and perpendicular to direct trace is axis because this is perpendicular to direct trace and passing through focus s is how we get the properties of axis and directrix connected with the conic. Now let's see what is the role of eccentricity in deciding the shape of the conic. So eccentricity plays a vital role in deciding the shape of the locus of the locus that is the E which is SP by PM has initially E equal to 1 implies SP is equal to PM if eccentricity is equal to 1 that implies the conic is a parabola is how we understand the conic to be a parabola next if i have e lying between 0 and 1 implies the conic is an ellipse is how we understand for e lying between 0 and 1 and next if e is greater than 1 implies the conic is a hyperbola that's how we understand 
the three basic properties parabola ellipse and hyperbola so therefore here if i would like to find the equation of parabola i just have the condition that for a parabola sp by pm which is equal to e is always one that implies sp is equal to pm so i get the locus where sp is equal to pm so let's take the locus p as xy and the focus s as alpha beta and this is the axis passing through the focus and this is the directrix which is perpendicular to the focus and let the equation of the directrix be taken as lx plus my plus n equal to zero the question here is how do i find the locus of p so for locus of p sp is equal to pm that implies the distance from s to p using the two points is given by root of x minus alpha whole square plus y2 minus y1 which is y minus beta whole square and pm is the perpendicular distance from p to m which is given by the formula lx plus my plus n by root of a square plus b square and this on squaring on both sides gives us x minus alpha whole square y minus beta whole square is equal to lx plus my plus n whole square by l square plus m square which on simplification gives the equation of the parabola on cross multiplication gives this so this can be further modified as l square plus m square x minus alpha whole square plus y minus beta whole square is equal to lx plus my plus n whole square is how we get the equation of the parabola using the condition sp equals pm and it is a second degree equation in x and y now we are going to see the different types of equations for a parabola so now that we have understood the mathematical definition of a parabola using the locus p with sp equal to pm now let's see one of the equation which is y square equal to 4ax so one of the ref representation for a parabola is y square equal to 4x now this parabola will be in the form of this so for the parabola y square equal to 4ax assuming that a is greater than 0 here I have my focus S which is given by A0 in case of the parabola y square equal to 4x my focus is A comma 0 and my vertex is origin and I have my locus P which is x comma y which is given out here then in this case this is called the directrix and this is called the axis and equation of axis is nothing but y axis therefore this is x equal to 0 and the directrix is given by x plus a equal to 0 and a point on this as minus a zero because this is exactly at equal distances from the y axis either way oh this is y and this is x on either way 
So using this, I have my focus, my point on the parabola, my directrix line, my axis, my vertex, which is origin. That's how we understand the parabola, y squared equal to 4x with a greater than 0. Also clearly, I see that the parabola passes through origin because if I have y squared equals to 4ax and if I substitute x equal to 0, then I get y squared as 4a times 0 substituted in place of x. That implies y squared is 0, which gives y equal to 0. Therefore, x equal to 0 implies y equal to 0. Therefore, the parabola passes through 0, comma 0. That's how we get the concept. Parabola passes through origin 0, comma 0. Next, if I see out here, the y-axis is a tangent to the parabola exactly at the vertex. Therefore, I can say that y-axis is the tangent to the parabola y squared equal to 4ax at the vertex 0, comma 0. That is how I understand the tangent at the vertex for the given parabola y squared equal to 4ax with a greater than 0. Now let us take the other type of the parabola in the form y squared equal to minus 4ax with a greater than 0. So what happens if I change the positive sign to the negative sign with replaced by minus 4ax? So let us see each of the properties of the focus, directrix, axis, etc. for the parabola y squared equal to minus 4ax. So taking the axis and the directrix perpendicular to each other, I get My 4ax, which is replaced with minus 4ax, makes me understand that my x is replaced with minus x. So mathematically, I understand that if I have y squared equal to 4ax, if I replace this x with minus x, then I get the parabola y squared equals 4a times minus x, x replaced with negative x. This on simplification gives minus 4ax. So this makes me understand that all of positive values of x when are replaced with negative or all x signs are replaced with minus x signs, then I get a parabola which is similar to y squared equal to 4x. So all my positive values of x get transferred to the negative. Therefore, the whole of the parabola on the right shifts to the left because plus x signs are replaced with minus x signs on the left side. So this being x-axis and y-axis, I have the parabola in the form y square equals minus 4ax is in the shape on the left. It is the mirror image of the previous parabola with respect to the mirror y-axis. So I have the focus here. And I have the point here, which is x, y, and the focus, which is minus a0, because I come to the negative side. My focus a0 in the previous case gets reduced to minus a, comma 0. And this would be perpendicularly equal to the directrix. which is the directrix. Now, the directrix on the left is shifted to the right. Therefore, the equation x plus a equal to 0 is replaced with minus x plus a equal to 0, that is x minus a equal to 0. And then, I have the y-axis, which is remain fixed with the equation x equal to 0, and the directrix, the axis of this would be y equal to zero.
is how we understand the complete structure of the parabola with the vertex being 0 comma 0. All x's are replaced by minus x's in order to get the properties of the parabola y square equal to minus 4ax. So the focus which was a0 reduces to minus a0 because a is the position of the x coordinate. And my directrix which was x plus a equal to 0 is replaced with minus x plus a equal to 0 which gives me x minus a equal to 0. My axis and my directrix and my y axis are the same and the vertex is the same but the remaining change accordingly for the parabola y square equal to minus 4ax.